Over the course of three days, I tried to find and catch as many snakes as I possibly could. I hiked dozens of miles in the wilderness, explored new habitats, and flipped everything I could find, all with the hopes of uncovering some of nature's most incredible animals. To make things more interesting, I thought it'd be a good idea to try to challenge myself to find at least five species, because that's how many months I've waited for it to finally warm up outside. I chose this location for the first day because of the variety of habitats found here. There's grasslands, wetlands, and the potential to find several species of snake that I've never found before, some of which are venomous and incredibly rare. And as always with this place, it didn't take very long for me to find my first reptile. This is a painted turtle. They have the biggest distribution of any turtle in North America. When moving turtles off the road, you should always put them in the direction that they're headed. I started the day by hiking around one of the many ponds that are found here, and I noticed something really cool floating off in the distance. These are trumpeter swans. They're the heaviest native waterfowl in North America, and in the past they were almost hunted to extinction. But thanks to management and reintroduction programs in the mid-1900s, this species has bounced back. They're a real conservation success story. I didn't see any snakes around the pond, so I moved on to flipping everything I could find. I found a bunch of these old tires that somebody had dumped here. I don't like when people trash natural areas like this, but if I'm being honest, it makes some of the best places to find snakes. While I didn't find any snakes under the first two, I managed to find a salamander under this one. This is a small-mouthed salamander. They're a kind of mole salamander, which means they spend most of their life underground. On the other side of the tire, there was another small mouth salamander. Huh? I continued my search for snakes in the surrounding grassy fields, and I just about tripped over this eastern garter snake. It's not quite one of the rare species that I was out here looking for, but still a cool find nonetheless. And I noticed there was something unique about this specific individual. It was missing the end of its tail. This is what's commonly referred to as a clubbed tail, and it means that this snake escaped being eaten at some point in its life. And this snake marks species number one of five. So I continued through the fields, and that's where I found this deer. All that was left was this rib cage, and I thought that it looked pretty interesting. There are garter snakes literally all over here. Look, here's another one. Oh, he's angry. This is another eastern garter snake, and this one was not very happy with me. I then found another really pretty eastern garter snake, not even five feet away from the previous one. And then maybe three feet away from that one, I found two more snakes. Two eastern garter snakes. A few yards away, I found another eastern garter snake. And then finally, another garter snake. Come here. There were so many garter snakes here that I probably found well over 20 of them. I found this really cool creek type area coming through the woods here. So I'm gonna flip the logs on either side and see what I can find. The first log I flipped had nothing living underneath of it. But underneath the next one, I found another salamander. This is a slimy salamander. They produce a sticky slime that's sort of like snot to stop things from eating them. It's best not to touch them because it's really hard to get off your hands and clothes. This one was definitely one of the bigger ones that I've ever found. The next log had nothing, then nothing, and then... A millipede. My best guess is that this is a traveling cherry millipede. The colors are throwing me off a little bit on this one. I then flipped this rock and found the incredibly elusive red-backed salamander. That was the joke, these things are everywhere. If you live anywhere in eastern North America, you probably have these in your backyard. I heard some leaves rustling around in the creek, so I went to investigate, and look what I found. Here we have a green frog. Given the size of its tympanum or eardrum, this is likely a female. I left the creek and went to the road that I found the turtle at at the beginning of the day. And that proved to be a good idea because I found this common snapping turtle. I helped it move across the road, taking extra precaution to not end up in the hospital. Back the carapace just like that. We're gonna move it across the road. And now you're not gonna get run over by a car. I had about a half an hour left before I had to head home, so I hiked around one last field. The field was filled with burrows made by burrowing crayfish, and it was exactly what I was looking for. My main target of the day was the Massasaga rattlesnake, and this species uses the burrows as a place to spend the winter. If you're lucky in the springtime, you can see them hanging out near their overwintering site. And on this day, I happen to be really lucky.
This is an eastern Massasaga rattlesnake. They're really not that big and only grow about two feet long. While in general, they're pretty shy and tend to stay far away from people, there are some reported cases of people who haven't survived a bite from this snake. Their venom breaks down tissues and prevents blood from clotting, but that didn't change how excited I was to be this close to one, because this was my first time seeing one in person. I then found what is the largest anthill I've ever seen, and a few feet away from that, another Massasaga rattlesnake. While I was extremely lucky and excited to find both of these snakes, I only found two snake species that day, so there was still more work to be done. On the second day, I went to a dam. Usually it's not this flooded, but I chose this location because one of my favorite snake species of all time is found here. Because the water was so high, I was restricted to flipping rocks on either side of the dam. And at first, all I found was this red centipede. But then under a rock right by the water, I found this northern water snake. These aren't venomous and for the most part are harmless. This one got a few bites on me before I let it go right back where I found it. And underneath the next rock, there was a little brown mouse. After flipping another rock, I found the snake that I was after. This is a queen snake. They're incredibly cool because they have a very special diet. They only eat freshly molted or soft crayfish. From birth, they're able to detect a chemical that crayfish produce right before they molt. I then flipped a ton of rocks and went on a bit of a dry spell. But then I flipped a rock and found a bunch of ants. Under the next rock, there was another queen snake. Day two was short-lived because a storm was supposed to move in, and I didn't want to get caught out in the rain like I did in the last video. I did find two species though, so on the third day I only had to find one more snake species. On the last day I went to a different wetland that I've caught a few snakes at before. I chose this spot because there's also allegedly a giant salamander that calls this place home. And on the boardwalk over the water I found another snake. Here we have another eastern garter snake. This one didn't musk or bite me. Every single time I've been to this wetland I've found at least one eastern garter snake here. After that I moved on to flipping as many things as I could find. I flipped the inside of a car door and found something incredible. This is an eastern tiger salamander, one of the largest terrestrial species of salamander found on the entire continent, and I've never actually found one before. Like other mole salamanders, they spend a majority of their life in burrows underground, so I was incredibly surprised when I actually found one. After the tiger salamander, I went right back to flipping things. Then I flipped some more, the whole time keeping my eye out for any snakes that might be living under these logs. I then found another centipede. I told myself I wouldn't stop flipping until I found a snake. I then found a worm, which is the right shape, but not quite the right animal I was looking for. And eventually I flipped a log that had a snake underneath. It was this pretty big decays brown snake. They aren't venomous and they eat things like earthworms and slugs. After finding dozens of garter snakes, a Massasaga rattlesnake, queen snakes, a water snake, and now with this decays brown snake, I think I successfully completed my challenge.